In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The opening prayers for the monthly meeting of the Confraternity of Mary Immaculate Queen. St. Louis Marie de Montfort's Prayer to Mary. Hail Mary, beloved daughter of the Eternal Father. Hail Mary, admirable mother of the Son. Hail Mary, faithful spouse of the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, my dear mother, my loving mistress, my powerful sovereign. Hail my joy, my glory, my heart and my soul. Thou art all mine by mercy, and I am all thine by justice. But I am not yet sufficiently thine. I now give myself wholly to thee without keeping anything back for myself or others. If thou still seest in me anything which does not belong to thee, I beseech thee to take it and to make thyself the absolute mistress of all that is mine. Destroy in me all that may be displeasing to God. Root it up and bring it to naught. Place and cultivate in me everything that is pleasing to thee. May the light of thy faith dispel the darkness of my mind. May thy profound humility take the place of my pride. May thy sublime contemplation check the distractions of my wandering imagination. May thy continuous sight of God fill my memory with his presence. May the burning love of thy heart inflame the lukewarmness of mine. May thy virtues take the place of my sins. May thy merits be my only adornment in the sight of God and make up for all that is wanting in me. Finally, dearly beloved mother, grant if it be possible that I may have no other spirit but thine to know Jesus and his divine will, that I may have no other soul but thine to praise and glorify the Lord, that I may have no other heart but thine to love God with a love as pure and ardent as thine. I do not ask thee for visions, revelations, sensible devotion, or spiritual pleasures. It is thy privilege to see God clearly. It is thy privilege to enjoy heavenly bliss. It is thy privilege to triumph gloriously in heaven at the right hand of thy Son, and to hold absolute sway over angels, men, and demons. It is thy privilege to dispose of all the gifts of God, just as thou willest. Such is, O heavenly Mary, the best part, which the Lord has given thee, and which shall never be taken away from thee. And this thought fills my heart with joy. As for my part here below, I wish for no other than that which was thine, to believe sincerely without spiritual pleasure, to suffer joyfully without human consolation, to die continually to myself without respite, and to work zealously and unselfishly for thee until death as the humblest of thy servants. The only grace I beg thee to obtain for me is that every day and every moment of my life I may say, Amen, so be it, to all thou didst do while on earth. Amen, so be it, to all that thou art now doing in heaven. Amen, so be it, to all that thou art doing in my soul so that thou alone mayest fully glorify Jesus in me for time and eternity. Amen. For the living and deceased members of the congregation of Mary Immaculate Queen, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated.
Father Benedict mentioned that for the confraternity meetings, he's been going through the confraternity rule with you, and that one chapter at a time and some short commentary. He mentioned you're on chapter four, which is on the insignia of the confraternity. It says, at their reception, members receive the miraculous medal with the blue cord. They also receive a large brown scapular at profession. The large brown scapular is to be worn at confraternity meetings and at mass on the principal feasts of the Blessed Virgin, according to local custom. They shall wear the small brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and the miraculous medal at all times <coughs> as a sign of consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So on these two things, these medal of Our Lady, a miraculous medal of Our Lady, and the scapular that we wear. First on the miraculous medal, as you know, that was given by the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Catherine Labore. Mary appeared to her several times. And on November 27th, 1830, she appeared to St. Catherine inside of an oval frame standing on a globe and shone lights, rays of light over the globe. And around the frame were the words, O Mary, conceive without sin, and pray for us who have recourse to thee. And this medal became known as the miraculous medal because as soon as it became known, there were so many miracles worked, especially miracles of a, of a moral or spiritual nature, that is the conversion of great sinners. And the most famous of these was Alphonse Radisbon, who wore the medal on a dare, so to speak. He was an, a Jew, uh, not a very, uh, uh, not a terribly devout Jew. He was rather worldly, but he did have some, some sense of piety. But he despised the Catholic faith. He went to Rome as he was making a tour of the world before getting married. He was going to get married. And so he was taking a tour of the world. He went to Rome simply because it was famous. And while there, he went to go see an acquaintance, a friend of his, who was not Catholic or was, he was either Protestant or a, a fallen away Catholic I, that had become Protestant. I don't remember exactly. But instead of finding his friend, he found the brother of his friend, who was a devout Catholic. And this man felt inspired to convert Alphonse. And uh, he didn't know why, but he just felt he, he needed to try to convert him. So he, uh, uh, this man's daughter, one of his daughters, put the miraculous medal on a, a chain or string, gave it to her father to give to Alphonse. And her father did. He challenged him to wear this. He said, if you don't think, don't believe in our blessed mother, you don't think it means anything, then you don't think you'll be hurt by wearing it. And then he, he reluctantly, just because of the, the insistence, he took it and he put it on. And, and then his friend's, or the, his friend's brother said, well, now you can't just wear it. You have to say the prayer that goes with it. So he made him, he gave him a, this prayer that's a, a long form of the memorari of Our Lady, a considerably longer form. And he said to him, but I only have one copy of this prayer, so you're going to have to write it out for yourself and give me my copy back. And as the process of writing it out, he was quite irritated by it, but he did it just to get rid of the in insistence of this man. So he wrote it out, and as a result of writing it out, the prayer got stuck in his head, similar to the way a song gets stuck in your head when you've 
hurt it and you can't get rid of it. And so, quite against his will, he kept all day long reciting this prayer, which of course was a grace that was given to him. And ultimately, our Blessed Mother appeared to him in the Church of St. Andrew de la Frate in Rome, and he instantly was converted. He instantly knew all about the Catholic faith, things that he had never learned before. He never knew about original sin and what baptism does, and yet he knew about it. And he, he desperately wanted to be baptized, so that they made an exception. The, the priest was going to make him wait some while for instruction, like normal, but then he saw that he knew the faith already in an instant, and so he was baptized something like a week or eight or ten days later after making a retreat. But this is the, the, the famous, most famous miracle of conversion through the miraculous medal. And there are many others. And so it, we wear this medal for our Blessed Mother's protection. It's a, a, uh, a wonderful proof of our devotion to Mary and obtains for us many graces. When it comes to the scapular, of course, we receive in the confraternity, as we do, religious also do, the large brown scapular. But all Catholics wear the small brown scapular. It's one of the most universal customs, universal devotions among the faithful that other than lax and indifferent Catholics, there's, everyone wears the brown scapular. And to a large degree, even lax and indifferent Catholics, they, they still have a sense that they have some trust that our Blessed Mother will watch over them when they wear their scapular. They don't want to get rid of that even when they have abandoned all other practices. But this was given, of course, to St. Simon Stock and the, she said to him, in giving him the scapular, this shall be a sign to you and to all Carmelites, whosoever dies wearing this shall not suffer eternal fire. When we were enrolled in the brown scapular, the priest said to us, or, or said the oration over us, O Lord Jesus Christ, sanctify this scapular which thy servant will devotedly wear, devotedly wear for the love of thee and of thy mother, so that by her intercession he may be protected from the wickedness of the enemy and persevere in thy grace until death. And then it was placed on our overhead, and the priest said, Receive this blessed scapular and ask the Most Holy Virgin that by her merits it may be worn with no stain of sin and may protect you from all harm and bring you into everlasting life. And so this is what the brown scapular is. It is a sign of our devotion to Mary and Mary's protection over us. Blessed Claude Colombier says, they tell me those great saints that I have nothing to fear if Mary interests herself in my behalf, but this is not enough to relieve my anxiety. I wish to know if she will indeed interest herself in me. She has given me a tangible sign thereof. I have but to glance at my scapular and recall the promise, he who dies wearing this shall not suffer eternal fire. I do not hesitate to declare that nothing is a more certain pledge of salvation than a faithful wearing of the little brown badge. There is none, therefore, to which we should attach ourselves with more zeal and constancy than this. Divine Mother, what countless miracles you have caused to be wrought to confirm this blessed belief. Then, Christians, to engage this incomparable Mother to watch and guard you and to interest yourself, herself in defending you. Array yourself in the garment she holds forth for your acceptance. Wear the scapular and wear it until the hour of your death. The Famous theologian Billuart, he, he also compares it to a sacrament. 
in a certain sense, obviously it's not a sacrament, but in a certain sense, he says, the, just as the sacraments are outward signs that give grace, so that whenever you see that the priest has poured the water, a baptism and said the words, you know that, that grace has been given the sacrament of to the sacrament of baptism. So he says in, in a somewhat similar way, the, sac the scapular is a, a sign that through which we receive grace. That is, whenever our Blessed Mother sees us wearing the brown scapular, she is praying and obtaining for us special graces in return. There's one other meaning of the scapular that um, Pope Pius XII asked that Catholics wear it as a sign of our consecration to Mary. This is the meaning of um, in the chapter 4 that we just read. It says, They shall wear the small brown scapular of Our Lady and the miraculous medal at all times as a sign of consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It was Pope Pius XII in 1950 who had asked that Catholics attach that significance to the scapular. Um, he said that he asked that it be worn as, quote, a sign of their consecration to the most sacred heart of the Immaculate Virgin, which consecration in recent times we have so strongly recommended. He's referring there to the consecration that he made in 1942 of the whole world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which consecration he in, I think it was 1948 or so, that he urged that families and parishes make. And here in 1950, he is asking the faithful that they wear their brown scapular as a reminder, a pledge, of the, a sign of that consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. He also asked that the scapular, because of its very simplicity, that it be a reminder to us of humility, modesty, and simplicity. He said, may all see in this keepsake of the Virgin herself a mirror of humility and purity. May they read in the very simplicity of the garment a concise lesson in modesty and simplicity. It's sad to see sometimes those who, what a, quite a contrast to those who dress very immodestly, certain Catholics, and then have the gall to wear the brown scapular if they only understood the, the inconsistency of, of their behavior. We might wonder why such a simple thing as a cloth, but we see in the Old Testament and the New Testament that the, a garment is very often a sign of giving some protection and favor. When God forgave Adam and Eve their sin, he made them garments. And when uh, uh, Jonathan wished to give a sign of his friendship to David, he gave him his coat. And Jacob made the coat of many colors for his son, his favorite son Joseph. And Eliseus used the, the mantle of Elias to part the waters of the Jordan. When our Lord told about the parable of the prodigal son who returned, he said to kill the fatted calf, but he said to bring the first robe and put it on him. And we read in the New Testament too of how St. Paul, the handkerchiefs were taken from St. Paul, they were laid on the sick and they were cured. So this brown scapular we wear, we should wear it always. Never take it off, if it wears out, replace it with a new one. Um, as the Spanish Carmelite who wrote the 800 or so page in, uh, encyclopedia on the brown scapular around 1930, 
he said, it's a good pious custom of Catholics that when one scapular wears out, we put the new one on before we remove the old one so that we always have our brown scapular on at all times. If someone were to lay aside the scapular for a short, uh, for a short or long time, you know, for a, if they were to sit, lay it aside for a long time or for a short time with no reason, they would lose the indulgences attached for the time that they have laid the scapular aside. They would not gain the indulgences. If someone were to lay it aside out of contempt, however, they would lose membership in the confraternity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is what we're enrolled in when we receive the brown scapular. And they would need to be re-enrolled in the confraternity. Otherwise, they would, they would not have membership in it. They would not gain the indulgences. So someone... That could happen, for example, in the case of someone who has lost the faith and who takes the brown scapular off out of contempt for it. There was, I'll end with the story of a, in the times of the persecution in China by the mandarins that persecuted the Christian converts. This one new convert, he had his brown scapular on. He was ordered by the judge to take it off. He said, never would, would I take the brown scapular off. I'd rather have my head cut off. And so they tied him up and the judge ordered him to be mercilessly beat. And he, they beat him and, until the flesh was flying and blood all over and they, till they thought he was dead. And his only words were to the judge, you can continue, I'm still living. I'll never take the scapular off. So let that be a, a lesson to all of us. I'm sure you all wear the scapular devoutly. Um, try not to forget that you're wearing it. In the morning, for example, when you get up, you can kiss the scapular. There is reportedly, I've never been able to find an official source, but the Carmelites do mention a 500-day indulgence for, granted by Benedict the Fifteenth, a hundred years ago, for all those who, every time you kiss the brown scapular, 500 days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. St. Louis Marie de Montfort's Prayer to Jesus. O most loving Jesus, deign to let me pour forth my gratitude before thee for the grace thou hast bestowed upon me in giving me to thy Holy Mother through the devotion of holy bondage, that she may be my advocate in the presence of thy majesty and my support in my extreme misery. Alas, O Lord, I am so wretched that without this dear mother I should be certainly lost. Yes, Mary is necessary for me at thy side and everywhere, that she may appease thy just wrath, because I have so often offended thee, that she may save me from the eternal punishment of thy justice, which I deserve, that she may contemplate thee, speak to thee, pray to thee, approach thee, and please thee, that she may help me to save my soul and the souls of others, in short, Mary is necessary for me that I may always do thy holy will and seek thy greater glory in all things. Ah, would that I could proclaim throughout the whole world the mercy that thou hast shown to me. Would that everyone might know I should be already damned were it not for Mary. Would that I might offer worthy thanksgiving for so great a blessing. Mary is in me, oh what a treasure. Oh, what a consolation, and shall I not be entirely hers? Oh, what ingratitude! 
My dear Savior, send me death rather than such a calamity, for I would rather die than live without belonging entirely to Mary. With St. John the Evangelist at the foot of the cross, I have taken her a thousand times for my own and as many times have given myself to her. But if I have not yet done it as thou, dear Jesus, dost wish, I now renew this offering as thou dost desire me to renew it. And if thou seest in my soul or my body anything that does not belong to this august princess, I pray thee to take it and cast it far from me. For whatever in me does not belong to Mary is unworthy of thee. O Holy Ghost, grant me all these graces. Plant in my soul the tree of true life, which is Mary. Cultivate it and tend it, so that it may grow and blossom and bring forth the fruit of life in abundance. O Holy Ghost, give me great devotion to Mary, thy faithful spouse. Give me great confidence in her maternal heart and an abiding refuge in her mercy so that by her thou mayest truly form in me Jesus Christ, great and mighty, under the fullness of his perfect age. Amen. The Fatima Prayers. My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee, and I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee, and I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee. And I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in tabernacles throughout the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which he is offended, by the infinite merits of the sacred heart of Jesus, in union with the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. O most holy Trinity, I adore thee. My God, my God, I love thee in the most blessed sacrament. O my Jesus, it is for love of thee in reparation for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and for the conversion of poor sinners. Benedictio Dei Onipotentis Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti Dishen et Superbos et Manian Semper. 